Legislation that would narrow the Federal Reserve's dual mandate of price stability and full employment is scheduled to be introduced this week in Washington. The Sound Dollar Act would require the Fed to focus solely on inflation. The bill's sponsor, Texas Congressman Kevin Brady, is the top Republican on the Joint Economic Committee, and he joins me now from Capitol Hill. Congressman Brady, welcome back to Bottom Line. Always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for having me. Congressman, today you told members of the American Enterprise Institute, quoting here, the Federal Reserve's monetary experimentation of the last decade must come to an end. But with unemployment currently at 8.3 percent, is now really the time to remove the Fed's focus on joblessness, especially when political gridlock on Capitol Hill isn't yielding any results? Well, actually, you know, I'm looking long term uh, at the question of, look, if America wants to have the strongest economy in the world for the next 100 years, what role do we want the Fed to play? And I'm convinced if we focus them on protecting the purchasing power of the dollar, on price stability, you actually create the strongest environment for job creation. We reach that maximum, uh, maximum employment. And I'm convinced the experimentation that they've done has created mixed results, created a whole deal, a lot of uncertainty. And what the White House and Congress hasn't done their job in getting the tax scheme right, getting the regulatory uh, balance right, uh, and, and these issues. So, or in getting our financial house in order as well. Right. So, I think if the Fed focuses, Congress should do their job as well. Congressman, why uh, one of your uh, goals there restrict uh, the Fed's balance sheet to Treasury securities? Talk to me about that. Why go that route? Well, two reasons. One, I think the Fed ought to be a. a, a ought not be allocating uh, a credit throughout the country. It ought to be uh, credit neutral. And so a Treasury's only going forward uh, focuses on that. We give them the flexibility in, in unusual circumstances to do otherwise. I think it's important for the market that they be neutral in their credit allocation. The other th concern I have is that invites political interference. When you're uh, reacting to special interest groups, allocating capital a certain way, the politics gets involved. I want the Fed to be politically independent to make the right decisions. And again, I think focusing on protecting the sound dollar mm -hmm. can create that strong economy for us. Congress, do you think that the Fed is not politically independent right now? Well, there's two things that worry me. Uh, one is that the credit allocation uh, going forward. Secondly, you know, I think there's a lot of pressure on them to be even more involved in the economy because Congress isn't acting. And I worry, too, the fact that Dodd-Frank used uh, their revenues to fund a, um, a uh, new federal agency also uh, intrudes on their independence. And so I want to restore that independence, but I want to give them a clear mandate from right. Congress and hold them accountable to it. Congressman, you just mentioned the phrase you just used, because Congress isn't acting. If Congress is not acting, should the Fed just stand by and do nothing? You know, I think because the problems are not monetary problems we're facing, they are fiscal policy problems. The tax code, the regulation, our financial debt, that's what I think is, is the biggest drag on the economy today. And as long as the Fed continues to keep trying to figure out some way, Congress and the White House aren't going to do their job. And in the end, we're not going to create the jobs that we really, I think, deserve. One of the reasons I think we have a, a very slow, very sluggish recovery to date. Congressman, last week, Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke testified before Congress, and he said the inflation outlook was, in his words, subdued. Fed policymakers don't see inflation as a problem right now, although, as you well know, domestic and geopolitical events could change that. With inflation now, as the chairman said, subdued, isn't the Fed fulfilling its mandate of keeping inflation at bay? You know, I heard during the 2000s that keeping the low, the interest rate so low, so long wouldn't create a problem either. And as you know, it triggered a financial crisis. Uh, it is hard to control inflation. It may be low today, but as it picks up steam, uh, it, it can be very hard for the Fed to rein in that inflation. But if your focus always is on uh, uh, preventing inflation or deflation, you stand a better chance of controlling it. So Con it may not be there today, but it could catch fire quickly. Congressman, what recent Fed actions would have been done differently if your legislation were already in effect? You know, I think, um, one, we're hopeful. They would have caught the asset uh, bubble in housing much earlier uh, than they did. Uh, secondly, I don't think the second round of quantitative easing would have occurred because there wouldn't have been such an uh, extraordinary circumstance for them to justify that. 
Sir, will the bill be introduced with co-sponsors, and if so, how many and who are they? We've just started, uh, we're going to introduce it today. We expect a uh, strong support of the sponsors here uh, in, over the next month. And again, we hope that this will be sort of the basis for a new discussion on Capitol Hill about what role we want the Fed to play going forward. And again, I'm convinced the strongest economy uh, in the world requires stable prices and a sound dollar. Texas Congressman Kevin Brady. He's the top Republican on the Joint Economic Committee. Congressman Brady, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you, Mark. Love being on the show. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. And a reminder, you can catch all the top news on Washington and on Fox.